In an earlier video, we discussed how each person's willingness to pay to live in a city reflected a combination of the financial and non-financial benefits of that city. We acted as if those benefits were somehow completely fixed, independent of the size of the city. But they are not. Cities can become both more congested and more fun when they become more crowded. Just as importantly, the productivity of a city, what determines the wages that firms are willing to pay workers, will also depend on the size of the city. The idea that crowding firms together in one metropolitan area makes them more productive is a central concept in urban economics. We call the benefits of urban scale agglomeration economies. Such economies do seem to exist. As city size rises in the U.S. and throughout the world, earnings go up, though not necessarily more than prices. Remember, urban economics doesn't claim that cities offer a free lunch, just that cities often make firms more productive. The willingness to pay higher wages is one sign of that added productivity. And we also know that direct measures of firm productivity are also typically higher in dense urban areas. Questioning viewers might wonder whether high firm productivity or worker wages really implies the existence of agglomeration economies. Maybe more productive firms and workers just choose to live in cities. Maybe cities have other advantages like access to deep harbors and airports and coal mines that attract people and firms and make them productive. These are among the most central questions of empirical urban economics. And I'd love it if you wanted to read up on some of that literature. But for right now, let's just assume that the city size is actually making firms and people more productive. Why? Well, the usual line is that agglomeration economies are all about reducing transportation costs for goods, for people, and for ideas. For goods, well, firms might become more productive because they have easier access to inputs or to customers. They save the cost of shipping if customers and suppliers live nearby. This was surely important in the 19th century, probably less so today. For people, firms might become more productive if they have to hire business services. And those services are provided in person by lawyers or accountants. Alternatively, a greater density of workers might allow firms to become more productive by matching to the workers that are best suited for their needs. A related hypothesis is that the size of urban markets makes it easier for firms and people to specialize and specialization leads to greater productivity. Adam Smith strongly believed that, and his line is that in so desert a country as the highlands of Scotland, every farmer must be butcher, baker, and brewer for his own family. This means that when density is low, specialization disappears. Finally, it is possible that agglomeration economies work by speeding the flow of ideas. If entrepreneurs and managers get better ideas by learning in cities, then they will become more productive, and some of that productivity may well turn into higher wages for their workers. The great English economist Alfred Marshall wrote that in dense clusters, the mysteries of the trade become no mystery, but are as it were in the air, which powerfully evokes the learning that can occur within dense urban areas. In the next video, we'll look at how to express agglomeration economies in the demand for urban space.